Hey, Dr. Sarah here, and leadership has really changed over the past century. If we think back to a century ago, leadership really wasn't even a term that was talked about. Management was the key topic of the day, and folks were considered to be managers and supervisors and bosses if they were the ones that were in control, if they had the power. Well, over the decades, we we see a shift from that power and control to, well, you could be a manager if you had certain personality traits. If you innately had certain traits, then you're allowed to be a leader. We saw another shift over time. Well, if you demonstrate certain behaviors, if you do certain things, then you're allowed to be a leader. Then in the 80s, we we saw a transition from transactional leadership to transformational leadership about that impact that, that you may bring to an organization. And then most recently, in the past decade or so, we've seen the emergence of a variety of leadership styles. You've likely heard of some of these leadership styles from being an authentic leader to being a servant leader, being an adaptive leader. One of my favorites is strengths-based leadership. Henry Nordhaus provides a good definition for leadership that I like to bring to organizations and teams that I work with. And this definition holds that leadership is a process whereby a leader influences a group of people to achieve a common goal. And that's a helpful definition because it helps us recognize that being a leader in a context is not limited to individuals that have a certain role within an organization or individuals that hold a certain position within an organization, but rather being a leader is open to how we use our influence, how we use our voice in a situation. Now, for our visual learners out there like myself, I really like to use analogies, right, as we're talking about leadership in in topics of this nature. And so when we think about these different styles of leadership, I really like to equate them to different glasses. So I actually have my pair of glasses here. These are my everyday glasses that I wear. Uh, Those of us who have to wear glasses likely know that there's different kinds of glasses, everyday glasses, reading glasses. Uh, sunglasses, whether you snorkel and wear goggles or snowboard and wear goggles, whatever it may be. Um, let that be an analogy, right? So strengths-based leadership is a, is a pair of glasses. It's a type of glasses in which you can view your team, your department, your organization. It shapes how you see and interact with others around you. Now, if you haven't already, I encourage you to take your Clifton Strengths assessment and learn of your top strengths because first starting with that awareness of knowing what our own individual strengths are as a leader is very helpful in understanding more about who we are. But then as a leader, we've got to take it a step further and learn about the strengths of others on our team so that we can help develop those strengths, we can celebrate those strengths, and that we can really uh, work together as a team where folks have the opportunity to live into their strengths. A great quote from Tom Rath on strengths is about the fact that we don't need well-rounded individuals, we need well-rounded teams. So the idea here with strengths-based leadership is that we want to foster team environments where there's collaboration, where there's a sense of belonging and inclusion, where folks can show up to that environment, use their strengths, knowing that my strength may be in this, your strength may be in that, and yet we can work together to achieve whatever that goal may be. Now, one more uh, learning aid I'll I'll leave you with in this session uh, is about this uh, Shape-O toy. Now, this may be something that you interacted with when you were a toddler, when you were growing up. Uh, Maybe it's a toy that uh, you've had your children use or your grandchildren use. But I really like to use this toy as an illustration for strengths-based leadership as well. Now, we know with this toy, we have different pieces. They're all different shapes. And then within here, the idea is to match the the shape with, with a certain spot. And I really like to use this as an example of strengths-based leadership because if we have uh, someone that's, that's really strength, right, in, in being an oval, 
Um, well, let's see, you know, it's not quite necessarily going to fit in, in the square spot, right? And so we want to make sure as leaders that that we are encouraging folks, uh, that we're giving them projects, that we're giving them opportunities to work in ways that they're able to use their strengths so that they can uh, really have that sense of inclusion and that sense of being part of the team, being celebrated for the value that they bring the organization in that way. So now let me ask you, how might you practice strengths-based leadership in your context today?